Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's a pleasure to be on. We are continuing our series on the Quranic view of the Bible, Dr. Shabir. We've looked at uh, which uh, parts of the Bible the Quran references. We've looked at positive and negative depictions in the Quran. We've looked at how Muslims have understood the Quranic uh, view of the Bible. And now we want to look, Dr. Shabir, at how non-Muslims have um, viewed the Quranic view of the Bible. And uh, of course, Dr. Shabir, there's been a long history of commentary from non-Muslims about Muslim perspectives on the Bible. And um, maybe you can identify the dilemma that they've pointed to, right? They like to, to, to needle Muslims and say, you know, there's this dilemma here. So tell us a little bit about that dilemma that they've identified. Yes, uh, uh, often in, in Muslim Christian uh, dialogue on, on this question, uh, our interrogators or interlocutors will, will say, okay, so your Quran tells you to believe in the Gospels uh, and, and in the Bible more generally. And um, at the same time, the Quran is at variance with, with the Bible. Uh, so you cannot possibly believe in the Bible. Mm. And yet, if you believe in the Quran, you have to believe in the Bible. So in a way, if you believe in the Quran, then uh, you believe in the Bible, but the Bible tells you you can't believe in the Quran. So <laughs> if you believe in, if the Quran is true, then the Quran turns out in the end to be false. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this has written, re re reached such an apogee that um, uh, in a recent debate with, uh, between a Muslim and an atheist, uh, the atheist said, uh, you know, I can use that argument which the uh, Christian apologists are using, mm. uh, but I won't use it. And mm -hmm. that is the argument that if you uh, believe in the Quran, you'd have to believe in the Bible. But uh, if you believe in the Quran, you cannot believe in the Bible. And therefore, you're in a contradiction. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you believe in the Quran, then the Bible must be true. But if the Bible is true, then the Quran must be false. He said, I won't use that uh, argument. Why? Because uh, I believe that both books are false anyway, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. because he doesn't believe in God, so there's no book from, from God. But by his mere saying, I am not going to use that argument and describing what the argument is. He's just finished using it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's the, the extent that it has reached, and it is necessary, therefore, for Muslims to understand what this objection is, and, and how to counter that objection. Mm -hmm. It's a very old objection, Dr. Shabir, right? I understand it's been used for many, many years by Christian missionaries primarily. Yes, uh, in, in a previous episode unrelated to this particular series, well, well uh, not disconnected from this particular series, but related in terms of content, uh, we had reviewed a, the doctoral dissertation of Ryan Schaffner uh, from 2016, uh, done at Ohio State University uh, under the supervision of Sean Anthony. Um, uh, Ryan Schaffner has uh, shown that uh, if we want to understand the modern attitude and these discussions that are taking place nowadays, we have to go back to uh, early uh, 20th century uh, India, uh, where uh, Muslims and Christians were having these discussions and even public debates on the matter. Uh, Christian missionaries had entered the region in order to naturally spread uh, their message, evangelize, uh, and uh, convert Muslims to Christianity. And so uh, mo some Muslims engaged with them, and most notable, there was uh, Malana Kairanvi on the Muslim side, and there was Reverend Fander uh, among the Christian missionaries. So in, in such debates and in writings, um, uh, Reverend Fander um, posited the position that uh, the Quran did not uh, critique the Bible. Uh, the, the Quran is merely um, uh, trying to correct misinterpretations, its own perceived misinterpretations uh, that uh, Christians and, Jew and Jews have applied to their Bible. In mm -hmm. other words, the Quran is correcting the people who misunderstood the Bible but the Quran is, it does not have a problem with the Bible itself. Mm -hmm. uh, now, on the Muslim side, uh, uh, the, the debaters became familiar with uh, uh, 19th century uh, biblical criticism, which was still on the rise, and they were using that to their advantage. Uh, but the, the, the counter from the missionaries was uh, simpler. They were saying, okay, if you believe in your Quran, you can't use those... Uh, 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 critical methods to apply against the Bible because your Quran is telling you you ought to believe in, in the Bible. The Quran mm -hmm. is verifying and acknowledging the truth uh, of the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
So Dr. Shabir, what do you make of that claim that, you know, the Quran is not necessarily critiquing the Bible, it's critiquing the interpretations that followers have made of the Bible? Yeah, so um, uh, I, I would like to uh, elaborate on that, on that particular claim in, in, in discussing my own view uh, in perhaps in a separate segment. Okay. For the moment, if you don't mind, I would like to trace out a little bit more the history of this idea uh, that, that is uh, thrown at Muslims, uh, as described by Ryan Schaffner and by others as well. So Ryan Schaffner has uh, um, traced the various strands of thinking that, that have led up to the modern discussions about this. One strand uh, is uh, what has been promoted by a, the, a, a, a journal entitled The Muslim World. And now I'm, I'm deliberately pronouncing it this way, let's see why. Um, it, 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 over time, this, this uh, journal, which was produced by Hartford Seminary uh, in the United States, has evolved and uh, its name has evolved. Uh, now they're spelling it Muslim world uh, to um, be more in line with the way in which Muslims will pronounce, the, pronounce the, that, that word. And, uh, and now a co-editor is uh, Yah Yahya Misho, who is uh, a, a, a European who converted to, uh, to Islam. So, so that shows a new direction uh, in, and a new attitude in, in approaching Islamic studies through that uh, journal. But for the longest time, the main contributors uh, to that journal, or many of the contributors, were uh, missionaries themselves, Christian apologists, and, and others who are studying Islam from the outside. And um, uh, for, they, they took generally the view that uh, the Quran does not criticize the Bible and uh, that the Quran is only criticizing uh, misinterpretations of, of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Among these uh, persons, we have the famous uh, Reverend Samuel Zwemer, who has written much about Islam and, and Muslims and about the Quran. We also have uh, Arthur Jeffrey, uh, who has, uh, again, written much uh, about Islam, and he has uh, uh, come to be known in modern academia as a well-placed uh, academic. Uh, so uh, we, we can see the academic discussions about Islam and Muslims and about the Quran taking place in the European languages uh, and, and English language, um, uh, the English language uh, w without much input fr from Muslims for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was all studied from the outside looking, looking in. Um, uh, among the German scholarships, uh, uh, among, uh, among the journal sc German scholars, we have uh, Abraham Geiger, uh, who uh, wrote, wrote a book entitled something like What Muhammad Has Borrowed From or Taken From uh, the Jewish uh, Scriptures. And uh, he didn't limit himself to comparing what the Quran has in common with Jewish scriptures, but he also showed what the Quran has in common with Jewish lore. And uh, the uh, upshot of what he wrote is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't really know what he was doing. Uh, he uh, thought that what he was presenting as the revelation from God uh, is in line with the uh, previous scriptures, but in fact, he was getting it by word of mouth and hearing it from uh, fables and tales and uh, what was going on around him. He put them all together, thinking that all of this is in line with the Bible, not realizing that some of this was coming from, uh, you know, Jew Jewish lore. And uh, uh, taking it a step further, Ignaz uh, Goldziher, who now has become well-placed in, in academia, well-known for his uh, advances in uh, st Muslim studies, uh, he um, uh, made a distinction between uh, the, uh, a, a distinction we've already looked at, but now he will become more pivotal in, in advancing uh, this distinction, a distinction between uh, criticism of the interpretation of the Bible and criticism of the Bible itself. And uh, it was his contention that the Quran does not criticize the Bible itself, and uh, the earliest uh, Muslim scholars did not uh, criticize the Bible, and, but they would use terms like mostly. Mm -hmm. Mostly they did not criticize the Bible. They would just criticize the interpretation uh, of the Bible. And their uh, use of terms like mostly, as pointed out by Ryan Schaffner, is uh, really uh, an, an, uh, an acknowledgement that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes yes, they did. Yes. And, and for Ryan Schaffner, like, this sometimes is important. We need to see what is going on. 
uh, in the minds of the earliest uh, writers uh, among Muslims about uh, the, the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Mm -hmm. So what does Ryan Schaffner say about these early thinkers? Well, he has actually, um, apart from the fact that he's looking at this um, development among the Christian apologists and, um, and missionaries, uh, like on the one hand, he's showing, okay, these uh, folks had the idea of using the weapon of the enemy against them. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so he's showing how, you know, they had their own internal discourse going on, um, uh, separate from what the Muslims themselves were, were thinking and, and writing about. On the other hand, when he goes to the writing of the Muslim scholars from early on, he can see, uh, uh, you know, we don't have the earliest uh, writings, uh, but the writings we do have dating back to about the ninth century um, um, indicate that uh, scholars were, on the one hand, showing a sympathetic attitude in using the Bible, but on the other hand, they were reserving judgment on certain issues, and sometimes they plainly uh, disagreed with the contents of the Bible. So he would find, for example, and he demonstrated this, uh, that uh, a, a scholar would be trying to prove that the Bible speaks about the coming of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But the quotation that he calls from the Bible includes elements that are not in line with Muslim theology. So what mm. does this Muslim scholar do with a quotation like that? He modifies it. So as just to retain the gist that would uh, carry his point across without uh, incorporating the non-Muslim elements uh, of that uh, particular quotation, mm -hmm. which means that he, he is accepting the narrative from the Bible uh, in principle, but he is uh, only doing so by shaving off the elements that he thinks to be not really in line with Muslim theology. That means he accepts but doesn't accept. Mm -hmm. He accepts it on the whole, uh, but not with all of its parts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, scholars like uh, Goldziher had uh, said that, okay, it was Ibn Hazm uh, from the 11th century who uh, really uh, advanced the idea that uh, the Bible is corrupt according to the Quranic view. But uh, what Ryan Schaffner is showing is that prior to Ibn Hazm, there were scholars whose writings are now available, like Al-Jahiz, for example, uh, who clearly uh, criticized the text of the Bible in addition to the misinterpretations that the followers of the previous religions had applied to the biblical text. Mm -hmm. So is it safe to say, Dr. Shabir, that the, these non-Muslim scholars have misinterpreted or misunderstood the Quranic message about the Bible? Yes, they have uh, not only misunderstood the Quranic message about the Bible, uh, but they have also misunderstood the Muslim writings mm. about the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, so whereas, in fact, uh, looking at the Quran, they took the positive verses, uh, the verses of the Quran that speak positively about the Bible uh, as, uh, as, as the overriding rule, and then they uh, diminished the importance of the negative verses. They did the same thing also with the Muslim writings. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, now this is being corrected in modern uh, literature. All right, we'll leave it at that, Dr. Shabir. Next time we will look at your perspective on this whole issue. Sure. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always. <laughs>